We are all familiar with the vehicle battery since every car and truck has one. A RV or camper battery is very similar, but yet quite different. Hello, Philip from Sinrumbo. So how do you choose a camper battery? How do you calculate its capacity? In this video, you'll find out that it's actually not as difficult as it uh, might sound. We will explore the math necessary. First, we will find the meaning of the different units necessary to define a battery. We will see how these units are related and how to determine the capacity of the battery that you need. If you can add and subtract, you will have no problem understanding. I will keep this as simple as possible. Next, we will talk about the different types of batteries available on the market for RVs and campers. Next, we will talk about the safety precautions we need to take when we handle and install a battery in our vehicle. And finally, we will talk about the need to properly and correctly charge the battery that we just put in. I said at the beginning that car batteries and RV batteries are similar but different. Vehicle starting batteries are designed to provide a huge amount of current in a short burst of a few seconds to get the engine going. House RV batteries, on the contrary, are designed to provide a smaller current, but over a longer period of time, hours instead of seconds. Furthermore, the house RV battery is often heavily discharged before being fully recharged again, what is known as deep cycling. And this is the big difference. Our RV battery will be a deep cycle battery. First, we have volts, represented by the symbol V. That is the voltage produced by the battery. Today's vehicles use almost exclusively 12 volt systems and batteries. And it is very likely that your RV or camper will also operate from a 12 volt battery. Volts indicate the amplitude of the signal flowing through the system. By comparison, the electric signal that powers your house appliances has an amplitude of 110 volts in North America or 220 volts in some other countries. Then we have amps or A. That is the unit of current. To keep it very simple, let us say that indicates the force of the flow of electricity in the wires. Here I have to mention that there are two systems in use. One is called direct current or DC and that is the current produced by a battery. The current flows in one direction only. By convention, from the positive red terminal to the negative black terminal. The second system is the alternating current or AC. The current flows in one direction, then in the reverse direction, and so on at high speed or high frequency. So an AC system has both voltage and frequency. For example, 50 or 60 Hertz in our homes, depending where we live. Our battery DC system has only voltage, 12 volts, and no frequency. Then we have the unit of power, or P, measured in watts. Watts are simply the multiplication of volts by amps. Because a battery is a reservoir of energy, and since it will produce current over a period of time, it will eventually get depleted. It is important to us to know how long it will take before the battery needs to be recharged. Here we introduce another unit, the last one, and that is amps per hour. This number will tell you how many amps you can draw from the battery over a period of time. Here I need to mention an important rule, which is that a deep cycle battery should not be discharged to more than 50%. So if you buy a 100 amp per hour battery, you should only use 50 amps over an hour, then recharge the battery. Or you could draw 100 amps, but only for half an hour, then recharge. You can draw more for longer, but the life of the battery will shorten significantly. So remember that. So now how do we determine the size in amp per hour 
of our battery. The voltage is pretty much set since we all use 12 volt batteries. The only factor you need to determine for your own RV or camper is the capacity in amp per hour. For that, you need to list all the appliances and their power consumption in watts. Then determine approximately how long they will be running per day. For example, your fridge might have a 50% cycle in normal conditions. 50% of the time the compressor is running, 50% of the time it's offline. Your lights might be on only 2 hours a day and so on. Before you start making this list, I recommend you to do an online search for a pre-made spreadsheet. One that I have used myself, I will um, link down in the description below and put it on the screen here. Remember that you should only draw the battery down to 50% of its capacity and not more. If necessary, you can install two or more batteries, but for the sake of simplicity, I won't get into that here. So now you have determined that you need a 12 volt deep cycle battery of so many amps per hour. There are various types of technologies available today. The most common types are flooded lead acid, gel, absorbed glass mat or AGM, and more recently lithium ion. As you can see on the screen, each has its own pros and cons. Of course, price is an important factor since batteries are expensive. For me here in Argentina, availability is the limiting factor, price being second. I will let you research for yourself the different types and make your own selection depending on needs and budget. A factor that you need to watch is the type and location of the battery terminals. If your battery cables are long enough, the placement of the terminals might not be a factor, but the type of terminal might be since there are a variety. You just need to make sure you are aware of how you will connect your cables to the battery in advance so that you don't need to stop during the install to go buy additional parts, or worse, find out that the cables are too short. Safety precautions. Batteries are heavy and awkward to manipulate, and they also contain dangerous chemicals, so they need to be handled carefully. Make sure you have clear space to move around. Avoid tilting a battery as the acid inside might spill out and cause damage and burn. Be careful not to drop a battery as its case might crack and let acid out. If your battery is of the lead acid type, make sure the level of the acid is okay. Some might have spilled out in shipping if handled incorrectly and I speak from experience. Proper charging. Your home battery has a different function and use than the starting battery. Without getting into details, it consequently has different charging requirements. The best way to properly charge your home battery is from the engine alternator through a battery to battery charger. That is an electronic circuit that guarantees a safe and sufficient charging voltage and current to the deep cycle battery during any driving condition. Whether your vehicle is idling before you are ready to leave camp or you are driving down the highway at high speed, the battery will get charged properly. For many reasons, you cannot just connect your RV battery to the starting battery. It isn't that simple and it isn't safe. In modern vehicles, everything is now computer controlled and so is the vehicle charging system. That system was not designed to charge a second battery and that is why the B2B charger is a necessity. Now you know why we need a deep cycle battery in our camper, what the electric units mean, how to estimate the required capacity in amps per hour, and finally, how to safely handle a battery. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Please like and comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe and turn on the notification so you won't miss the next video. So thank you very much for watching and have a great day.